Brzezinski was an intellectual of a different sort, where he was against the mainstream view of American foreign policy that viewed European division as a natural outcome of international politics. And after Kennedy, ZKB devised and implemented LBJ's policy of bridge building with Eastern Europe. It was the work of his life, destroying the harbinger of the communists, the Russians. His theories fell in coherence, especially with the Republicans. Lyndon Baines Johnson's policy deviated from the one advised by Brzezinski by not taking an aggressive stance on the Soviet interference in Czechoslovakia. In this period, Brzezinski was almost a lone voice, but a very strong one, against the betterment of relations with the Soviet Union. Even against the Nixon-Kissinger policy, he advocated for closer ties with China rather than with Soviets. More on that era is detailed in his book, Between Two Ages. Zbigniew Brzezinski was obsessed with the Soviet Union. His sole aim in life was dedicated first towards breaking up the Soviet state and he did well for that. We should explain in a while how that was done but you should first know that he did not focus only on the US relations with Soviet Russia but worked on the overall foreign policy of the US. One of his most prominent milestones in that direction was the founding of the Trilateral Commission in 1973, financed by David Rockefeller. The Trilateral Commission is a non-governmental, policy-oriented forum that brings together leaders in their individual capacity from the worlds of business, government, academia, press and media, as well as civil society. Basically, a think tank for the global elites, of which Basinski became the first director. From here, you get a glimpse into the world of the Zionists famous for controlling the USA and how they actually do it through their representatives in various bodies. It was there that he met and befriended Jimmy Carter and became the national security advisor in his administration. Without any doubt, Henry Kissinger is considered the genius in international strategic affairs. But Zbigniew Brzezinski's approach towards Eastern Europe was entirely an opposite one. In 1975, contrary to the public opinion created by Ronald Reagan against President Ford's signing of the Helsinki Act, Brzezinski was virtually the only one in favor of it and proposed to use the basketry clause of the act against the Soviets. Then, against the advice of the State Department, the National Security Advisor of Jimmy Carter secretly went to the Cardinal Brzezinski. Such was Brzezinski, always stressing on his opinion. And that was one reason for his critics to criticize him, that whether it was the American hostage crisis in Tehran or any other major foreign policy issue, Brzezinski always found a way to link it back to the Soviets. Even at the time when the general consensus in the American political elite was to improve relations with the Soviet Union. For this reason, Brzezinski was the center of attention for the KGB for a long time. And in his pursuit, he did not care for the opposition he got from his own Democratic Party as well. One reason the world admired Professor Brzezinski was his scholarly certitude in which he showed a tendency to believe that any disagreement between theory and reality represented some fault on the part of reality and not of theory. This meant that not only he was an idealist but also a pragmatic personality, realizing that even though the actual situation is not perfectly aligned with the theory, one has to deal with it while staying as close to theory as possible. For example, in his 1962 book, Ideology and Power in Soviet Politics, he wrote that the communist bloc is not splitting and is not likely to split 
in the same way in which Beijing and Moscow were getting apart. Using this deep understanding of the strengths and the weaknesses of the international players involved in the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, Brzezinski set himself to defeat them, knowing very well that if the Soviets were beaten in Afghanistan, it would eventually break up the entire Soviet Union. Before the Soviet army had moved into Afghanistan, America was only providing financial assistance to the militant rebels that revolted against the communist-backed government of Afghanistan. The then Central Intelligence Agency director Robert Gates wrote this in his book that the CIA was funding the Mujahideen till before the December of 1979. And after that, Brzezinski convinced Jimmy Carter to agree to CIA's plan of providing lethal weapons to the revolting militants. And what ensued was the second biggest victory of Brzezinski's life. The entire civil war was being controlled and run indirectly by Brzezinski from the White House with the international community's backing behind the US against the Soviets. We would like to end this part of Spignu Brzezinski's biography series by having you watch this clip of his from 2015. In retrospect, of what is happening these days on the Russian-Ukrainian border. President Putin has been very explicit. He wants to recreate the Soviet Union under a new name and under a different regime, in some ways like Imperial Russia. To accomplish that, he definitely needs Ukraine under his control. Without Ukraine, Russia is just a huge state surrounded by tiny little states, none of which really want to be part of the Eurasian Union. With Ukraine, Russia has a serious partner. History is much more the product of chaos than of conspiracy.